Hello everyone. I'm excited to be bringing this portion of the COSO 2013 framework overview to you. This blog series has three parts. The first one is going to give you an overview of the COSO 2013 framework. The second part is going to walk you through the mapping template that we've developed and how you can use the same process to do your mapping. And the third part is actually going to go through the map mapping process itself, tips on how we've done it with our various SOX clients. So what is COSO 2013 and why do we care? COSO stands for the Committee of Sponsoring Organizations. This was something that came out of the Treadway Commission way back in the 90s. This committee had developed an internal controls model in the early 1990s in response to the savings and loans crisis. So a lot of people think of COSO and they think of Sarbanes-Oxley. This predated Sarbanes-Oxley by a long time. And the reason it came into play was because when Sarbanes-Oxley was first mandated in 2002 and 2003, people started to look around and it said that uh, all companies would adopt an internal controls framework. People dusted off COSO from, the, from their shelves and started to reuse it. And so this was in the 90s. Roll forward into you know, the 2000s, 2013, and people recognized, people in the industry, in the internal audit industry, and auditing industry in general recognized that there have been a lot of changes in 30, 40 years. Business, operating, regulatory environment had changed since the original issuance. And so the five main parts of the original model remains the same, but there are now 17 principles that are concepts underlying the five components. And I'll actually walk through what the differences are for the, with you. So what's not changing is the definition of internal controls. There are still three objectives. The objectives, uh, if you look going down horizontally, it's around operations. It's still around your reporting and it's around compliance. SOX is just one component of a compliance, but compliance can include HIPAA, it can include all sorts of things. So the five components of internal controls, like control environment, risk assessment, control activities, information and communication, and monitoring activities, those are still the same. What we've done in the new version is they've updated it for business and operating environments. They've expanded and what used to be implicit, what was used to be implied in the five components, they've now written out into 17 principles. And the 17 principles also have areas of focus in them. And that's what we're going to go over are the 17 principles and the areas of focus. So the first part, the first component is control environment. That's still the same. And now the five principles that have been added is that demonstrate commitment to integrity and ethical values, exercises oversight responsibility, establishes structure authority responsibility, demonstrates commitment to competence, and enforces accountability. So you can see these are just little shorthands. In future sessions, we'll actually go into more details, but I just wanted to give you an overview. So the second component of the control is risk assessment, and now there are four more principles that align with risk assessment. That means you specify suitable objectives, identifies and analyzes risks, assesses fraud risk, identifies and analyzes significant changes. Uh, control activities, that is a component, and now there are three principles. Selects and develops control activities, selects and develops general controls over technology. That's what people call ITGC, and also deploys through policies and procedures. And the final one is a review of information and communication. Three principles line up with that uses relevant information, communicates internally, and communicates externally. And then the final component is monitoring activities, and that is conducts ongoing and or separate evaluations and evaluates deficiencies. And that's it on the overview of the COSO components and the principles. So here's a quick recap. Each of the 17 principles are supported 
by four to six points of focus. That's something that we'll go over in part two. Each of the points of focus is intended to help a company design, implement, and conduct and assess whether the principles are being met. Now, companies are required, required to show that each of the 17 principles are addressed, but not all points of focus have to be present and functioning. So again, the, the nuance here is we need to make sure we meet the five components. Within the five components, there are 17 principles and they further break down the 17 principles into points of focus. As long as you meet at least the 17 principles, you don't have to have all points of focus.